Uh, Talk TV hosts an exclusive interview with a man, the legend, who has spent 45 years of his career at the side of King Charles. The son's royal photographer, Arthur Edwards, tells the story from Nine about how he met the young prince and then went on to become a friend. And there aren't many times you are in royal circles today. I'm the man himself is here, Arthur Edwards. Arthur, delighted to see you, my Thank friend. You, it's Jeremy. been a while. It's good I'm, to see you. I'm, I'm and and I, the first question's obvious to me. You became a royal photographer by accident. Tell this story. It's brilliant at the polo. It's great. Well, what happened? I um, went to... We did a Sunday shift and there was a chap there who had stuffed me the week before on a story and I went up and sort of just congratulated him. And he said, um, well, look, what are you doing this afternoon? I said, nothing. Well, let's go down to polo. So we did and I got this great picture of the King, Prince Charles then, feeding his polo ponies. That's a there picture. it is. Yeah. Iconic. And uh, it published and I went the following week and published again and I thought... This is great, you know, this is... Uh, and um, and then I started to do more and more hunting and uh, polo and it was just... And, and then one day the editor said, look, I think I'd like to see who's going to get married. Well, who's going to marry? Because he said that when he was 30, it was a good time to get married. Yeah. And he was just come out of the Navy at 28. And so that was what I had to do. And then when I finally found Diana, um, I sent him a telegram with the, with the royal reporter I worked with at the time, Harry Arnold. And uh, said congratulations on your engagement to Princess Diana. I hope you both be very happy. And he sent me one back saying thank you for your kind words. He said I hope you won't be made redundant. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Fair to say though that you and he haven't always seen eye to eye. There's no, a no, great that, story. I've had some really. There, there's a great story about yeah. when you photographed the back of his head, isn't there? Oh yeah, he um, just there, and I couldn't believe it. He just turned. He was driving away after a polo match. Hadn't kind of said he was in a rush. Saw this huge bald spot on the back of his head. Oh my God, I thought, didn't believe it. And I photographed it. And is I that, there it is, there yeah, it is. It, yeah. Brilliant. And, oh. uh, anyway, I um, put it in the picture editor's drawer overnight. And uh, the following day, he said, We're going to splash on this. <laughs> I said, Oh God. And uh, <laughs> anyway, that's the picture there, yeah. Oh. And, um, and the, three days later, his policeman said, He's going to have a word with you about this. And it was on the front page of the sun. I think we've actually, yeah. have we got the front page of the sun? Yeah. That's Oops, it, yeah. Charles, yeah. there's a patch in your thatch. That's right, yeah. Did you know this was bad news, Art? Did you I, like, well, oh. I thought he's going to give me a bad time. It actually, he was quite reasonable about it. He said, Are you the reason why? <laughs> Everywhere I go, people are photographing in the back of my head. So. That's brilliant. The documentary tonight, by the way, on talk is fantastic from Nine. Uh, on it, you also said that you, you had another run-in with the future king back in the 1980s. Have a look at this, my friend. Prince Charles bought Highgrove, and I see that at the bottom of his land, there's a public footpath. So I'm walking along this footpath, and I've got this big lens on my shoulder. All of a sudden, he comes galloping up on his horse, the prince, and he's screaming, what are you doing on my land? And I said, well, you know, I'm just doing my job. And he said, some job. And I said, well, at least I've got a job thinking I've, you know, I've been on the staff 18 months now and I want to keep this job. At least I've got a job, which he took as an insult and he galloped off back to the house. That's brilliant, mate, because you've always been yourself. But the, the relationship between you and the King, as always, it's got stronger and stronger and better. How do you, after 46 years, view the press's relationship with the royal family today? It's, it's a lot improved. It all improved after the Leveson report, of course. You know, we had to get our act together as well. But before that, it, anything went, you know, everything, anything, you know, it just went straight in the paper. But now, of course, you know, we're much more uh, respectful of them and their privacy. Certainly, I mean, William suffered, I mean, terrible harassment from sorry I mean every time he went to the nursery we'd be there when he came out of the nursery when he was anything he did and he hated it and he I remember he sort of turned his head away he was so disgusted with it he didn't want that for his own children and uh, it doesn't happen now thank you because Catherine produces such brilliant pictures you know and we shares them with us so it's not necessary and of course that's finished you know the hunting watching him shooting pheasants, all that stop now. But it's a two-way street, isn't it? It is, of course. And there are plenty of times, the old man used to tell me, that the royal family have, have used the media for their own ends. When Charles course, and, yeah. and, and Camilla, Charles and Diana were at loggerheads, they yeah. both used me. So it's a sort of nice medium now, right? It it's is, it's, it's on a different now, level. Yeah. And right? also, we're at a different level now. You know, he's yeah. very happily married now, the king to Camilla, and they're incredibly happy. They're, you know, they're just... I mean, 17 years of marriage now. It seems to have gone in a flash. I yeah, I agree. Them. It's just, but they've been sensational. And I was saying the other night about her, you know, she was, she was, she was so unpopular. But what I really respect about Camilla is she's got a nut down, she's done the job, she's grafted, and she's got people's respect. What's your relationship with it? It's, she's never lost a common touch. That was the great thing. True. Never lost a common touch. Yeah. And she's, 
joy. She's was, fun, isn't she? I was photographing her today at Parliament, you know, and uh, oh, she's a joy, you know. She just, she just absolutely gets stuck in, and, and, and that's what's happened. And she's got, you know, she's patron all these charities, and she puts her heart and soul into it. And as I said just now, she never lost that comment touch. She never forgot she was one of us one day, and now she's she's the queen, and 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 she, you know, she's. She's just ace to work with. 25 years of doing your job, you got the MBE in 2003. And um, the Queen, I believe, um, well, well, it was some funny quip, right? What happened? Yeah, well, this is the badge here. She, uh, well, uh, I, when I, like we said, it's Arthur next, ma'am, and I came up and she said to me, I can't believe I'm giving you this. Is <laughs> that what she said? Yeah, I can't believe I'm giving you this. She said, how long have you been coming down here? I said, uh, 27 years, ma'am. She said, well, let's have our picture taken together. Amazing. It was really nice, yeah. So, uh, you know, she, uh, but it was lovely. And uh, and uh, as I was leaving, Prince Andrew came up to me and he said, uh, what did you get? I said, I got MBE. He said, oh, well, do you know what that stands for? I said, yeah, much bigger expenses. <laughs> hey, that's good. <laughs> do me a favour, because a lot has been said on the run-up to the coronation on Saturday about the cost to the British public and then how much the monarchy will be. And I was, uh, my old man, as you know, worked 40 years yeah. and it's ingrained in me. I'm a monarchist and yeah. I'm proud to say that. I understand that the world has changed. I get that. Um, what do you think will happen, Arthur? We're older now. What do you think of the monarchy today? Do you think Charles will... There was a great poll yesterday saying that actually a massive majority in this country still support the monarchy. Do you think Saturday will nail that for people? I what think do you so. make of it? I think he, uh, he's made a brilliant start, you know, lost his mother and yet he made that amazing speech to the nation. And, of course, Christmas Day, that great speech then. And I was in the Germany the other week with when he addressed the Bundestag and he gave him a two-minute applause. Um, he's just, um, he's really got on with it and uh, grasped it. And of course he did the longest apprenticeship anyone's ever right. done for the job. And he's, I think he's doing a brilliant job. And I think the people, I mean, I've been, I went to Bolton, the crowds were 30 deep. It was in Milton Keynes, they were 10 deep. You know, the people are turning out to support them. But the, what is really interesting as well is that, you know, people have made a fact that people will say, he's not my king, and a couple of people have thrown eggs, and people are saying, Arthur, that, that we never saw that with the Queen. There's always been dissension. There has always been dissension. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I, I've always said that if you spent 70 years of your life waiting for your yeah. destiny, and you're only achieving that when your mother dies, and yeah. if you speak, you get slaughtered. If you don't speak, you get called, you know, yeah. you know entitled. I think he's an all right bloke, don't you? I mean, he's an ace bloke. I mean, with the, with those uh, eggs thrown, he said to me, you know, be careful with the eggs, he said, but when we've got to worry is when they throw ostrich eggs. That's, that's what he said. That's what he said, yeah. And he sort of shrugs it off. And when we were in Milton Keynes and they all had their signs up, not our king, he went over and spoke to them, you know, and their signs came down. So, you know, it, it's... Um, <clears throat> listen, this won't last for long because they'll well realise that the public totally supporting this uh, this couple and uh, and quite rightly so as i say he's only ever devoted his life yeah. to helping others never himself prince's and, trust is an amazing well, organisation off the scrap heap, you know? absolutely and he started that with his navy pension 7400 yeah. quid that's right so you know this man's like dedicated to the nation and i could tell you stories if we had time of what he does for people without any fuss we never hear about it he's just an incredible man and and i'm telling you he's going to be a great king just hope that um, he gets a good crack at it. You know, I think people got to realise that you know this man is doesn't have to do this. He could sit and play backgammon all day or drink champagne, but he's tireless. He just never stops working for the benefit of others, never himself. You talked about the couple just to finish, and great to have you on, Arthur. Um, she is rock solid behind him, and everything. You know, let's not get into the whole Diana stuff; it was yeah. dreadful and all that, but. She's a massively important part of this, isn't she? Camilla? Oh, yeah, she is. She's just, she's there. I mean, when that, you know, that, that awful business with the bleaky pen calmed him down immediately. Yeah, immediately. And I, I've asked him to do things, you know, and he's been a bit wary of it. She said, come on, darling, let's do it, you know. And he, and he listens to her and, he, and, and she's a calming influence on him. And, and the great thing of all, Jeremy, is they've got this amazing sense of humour where they just laugh and enjoy each other's company. And when you see that, when you see that, you know that this couple that... They should have, he probably should have married Camilla when he when you know, but he had he had no time. He had when you're heir to the throne, you have to go in the army, the navy, the air force, business college. You've got to do all them things. It's just not time to 23 to get married, but he he should have done. But he's married to her now, and uh, and he took a big gamble when he did it. You know, in 2005 when they got married, the, the his approval rating was pretty low, and hers was even lower. But that's that's changed now. Just through hard work, Absolutely. dedication, Absolutely. and he never ever ever can praise him. You say. Brilliant. I mean, I was on the plane coming back from Berlin. It's a great speech. 
just shrugs it off, you know. He said, did you work hard at that? He said, I've, I've practised and practised and practised the German, you know, to get it right. That's dedication to the job. That's absolutely. what you don't hear about. Mate, I'm no. completely... It's absolutely a pleasure, Arthur. I know you're a really busy man over yeah. the next few weeks. Arthur Edwards, and by the way, you can watch that exclusive documentary, Arthur.